today we are going to be exploring around Mount Lindsay. I went to explore what I would describe as Southeast Queensland's most rugged and dangerous mountain. An imposing rock that stands tall and proud and is a visual wonder of creation to behold. And it is aptly nicknamed the Wedding Cake Rock. This is Mount Lindsay. She stands tall at 1177 metres in elevation within Mount Barney National Park in the scenic rim region of Queensland. Now make no mistake, this is not just any mountain. You cannot simply hike up to the summit. That privilege is only reserved for experienced rock climbers and even then it is an extreme test of their skill due to the crumbling makeup of its rock walls. Even attempting to hike to the very base of the first tier of cliffs is extremely challenging and rugged. Personally, I would describe Mount Lindsay as deadly. And that is what this video is about. Despite the danger, many adventurous climbers have sought to climb up this beast. And some will never be climbing again as a result. I've explored this mountain several times now and recently I returned again with the intention of circumnavigating around the entire base of the first tier cliff wall to investigate other possible routes up this rock. And whilst exploring, I was confronted with the reality of death in this place. As I came across two particular noteworthy sites, Miller's Memorial and Vidler's Grave. Now in this video, I'll tell you about two deaths that occurred at Mount Lindsay over the years that I am aware of, and also a third death, which although it did not occur here, it is relevant to this mountain of death. Now look, I'm just kidding when I say Mount Lindsay is a mountain of death. It's not. It's just a freaky massive rock. But the truth is that people have perished at this place and you will not find much information about this. And that's the reason for this video. I want to cover the tragic deaths of Edwin Lyle Vidler, the very first climber to die here. Ross Sinclair Miller, the most recent tragic fatality. And then finally, a man by the name of Toby Benham, who's also known as Lucky Chance, who has a very unusual but interesting link to Mount Lindsay, but he tragically died elsewhere. So let's begin with perhaps the most famous death that is linked to Mount Lindsay, and that is of Edwin Lyle Vidler. This is in fact the first recorded recreational climbing death in Queensland. Vidler was an extremely adventurous and capable 22 year old mountaineer. He was being mentored by a close friend called Bert Salmon and both had been climbing frightening rock walls over the years. Now during the Easter of 1928, both of them had climbed up to the high summit of Mount Lindsay from the southeastern access point, which is also now known as the tourist route. But rest assured, it is not for tourists. That simply means it's an access point for expert rock climbers. Now whilst exploring the summit, they both noticed a large crevice on the eastern side and they discussed the possibility of climbing up to the summit via that crevice. Now Vidler was keen to give it a try but Salmon said it's too dangerous and told his friend not to even entertain the thought. In other words, don't even try it. But Vidler was a tenacious fellow and on Christmas Eve of that same year, he went alone and camped in the nearby farm paddocks. And on Christmas Day, he took several photos from different angles as he was preparing for the best route to the crevice, which is also called a chute or a chimney. I reckon that's it. Let's go up a bit further. And then on Wednesday, the 26th of December, 1928, Boxing Day. Vidler made his fatal attempt up the chimney. Too steep. Oh, 
check it out. Whew. Yeah. It was Saturday morning and Vidler still had not returned home. And so a search party was formed up of six men, including Bert Salmon. And they went to Rath Downey that night. Early Sunday morning, the mountain was covered in dense cloud as the search party made their way up to the base of the cliffs from the northern side. They traced the eastern side of the cliffs for the next one and a half hours, constantly calling out to Vidler, but receiving no response. And they passed below the crevice or the chimney Salmon and Vidler had discussed. But the clouds were so thick and the terrain and bush was so rough and dense, they continued on until they reached the southeastern access point, that tourist route. Now, not necessarily that I'm going to go up this way, but I do want to have a look. And it's here that Salmon decides to free solo climb up this access point, right up to the summit where there was a climber's logbook, which they themselves had left there last Easter. But it was untouched, and this convinced Salmon that Vidler had not made it to the summit, otherwise he would have signed his name there. And so Salmon climbed back down and rejoined the group. And I just want to stress here, I read that he simply climbed up and back down. Now, that's no easy feat. This is indeed a testament to his amazing skill set as a climber, as this is not something that even expert rock climbers are willing to do today. Now, once back with the group, they divided into two parties. One group went around the western side, whilst Salmon and another member went back to the crevice, that large chimney formation where Salmon urged his friend not to attempt. Now, once Salmon reached it, he began to climb up about 15 meters and he writes that he then could see the body of his friend suspended far up the crevice above him. He continued to climb up and when he finally reached Vidler, he found that his body was caught under the armpits by vines and branches at the base of a large stinging tree coming out from the rock wall. Vidler had a terrible strike to his head, indicating that he died instantly. His body was in such an inaccessible spot that Salmon had no choice but to release the body, allowing it to fall down that crevice. Now once he climbed back down, Salmon was able to move his friend's body about 30 meters to a mildly level area where they covered Vidler using bushes, dirt and rocks. I can see a pink, ooh, oh, 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 oh. what the heck? There it is. Oh, oh. oh wow. There it is. Oh my gosh. Do you see it? Oh gosh. And then they went to notify the others that the search was now over. Wow. The okay. next day, Salmon and others found Vidler's campsite and his belongings, including yeah. his camera. Oh. On Tuesday the 1st of January, 1929, a small group of men went up to where Vidler's body lay. A difficult area to reach at the base of the towering mountain cliffs above it and they buried his body there. Vidler's cousin also made a little cross from hardwood with a lead plate that bared Vidler's name upon it. And they piled together a rock can to mark the spot and placed that cross there to mark this as Vidler's grave. The crevice today is known as Vidler's Chimney and it is no easy feat simply to reach the base of that crevice, let alone to even climb up that great chimney any distance whatsoever. Today, the hardwood cross has been replaced by a white aluminium cross, 
I have no information when it was replaced. But for those unable to get to Vidler's gravesite, there is a second memorial cross for Vidler outside of the Rathdowney Information Centre and Historical Museum in a small little garden at the front of the building. Take a moment to stop here one day and reflect upon this story of a tragic death that reminds us of the difficult, deadly, unpredictable and unforgiving nature of Mount Lindsay. Let's move on to the second known tragedy that occurred on this mountain. Now this one was more recent, as in 2011. And as I came up to the southeastern access point, there is a memorial for the gentleman that perished here. And this is what actually motivated me to put this video together. In loving memory of Ross Sinclair Miller. And he died 18 of June 2011. We do not think of you as gone. You are with us still in each new dawn. It was Saturday the 18th of June 2011 and a group of climbers assembled ready to tackle the challenge of climbing to the summit of Mount Lindsay. The group leader was Ross Sinclair Miller, an adventurous 51 year old based in Brisbane with more than 20 years experience as a qualified and skilled rock climber who had climbed to the summit of Lindsay several times. On this day, he was leading a group of five other climbers, including his wife, up the southeast face. This indeed is still a very difficult and exposed face to ascend, but Miller free climbed up to a midway section of the cliff face and then let down the rope to get the other five climbers up. As the rest of the group came up and passed him on top of the steep and slippery ledge, Miller then rolled up the rope and put it under his arm and over his head. He then turned around to pass the group on the ledge. And it was then that something completely unexpected occurred. Miller slipped and landed on his backside and went straight over the cliff edge, along with all of the group's ropes. The rest of the group were now effectively stranded on Lindsay. A man has fallen to his death while rock climbing at Mount Lindsay on the Queensland New South Wales border. A group of six was climbing in a designated area when one fell about 50 metres just after 10.30 this morning. A rescue helicopter was called in to winch the others stranded on the cliff face, but the weather made it too difficult. One man made his own way off the mountain. A local climber is now braving cold and dark conditions to try to guide the remaining four to safety. The second most experienced climber in the group, Mark Norman, made the decision to free climb back down the almost vertical cliff face where he located Miller's body. Norman then walked out of the National Park to raise an alarm. Local Rathdowney Police Officer, Senior Constable Andrew Zahl, then coordinated a full-scale rescue mission with Queensland Fire and Rescue, the SES, and a care flight helicopter also being deployed. The helicopter was unable to get close enough to the mountain to rescue the remaining four climbers off Mount Lindsay. So they got the assistance of a well-known local mountaineer who has been involved in numerous rescues, Innes Larkin. He's also the owner of nearby Mount Barney Camping Lodge. They flew Larkin to the top of Mount Lindsay where he was wenched down and then he descended on his own ropes to that stranded group. Larkin then coordinated the descent of the four climbers off the ledge and down the mountain face to where Miller's body still remained and they walked out of the National Park in the dark at 8.30pm. Innes Larkin was hailed a hero in this brave rescue. During this time, other emergency workers including fire and rescue, the ambulance and SES volunteers were attempting to walk up to where Miller's body lay, but it was deemed too dangerous to retrieve the body in darkness, and so they waited until Sunday morning the next day. Today, a climbing anchor, rope, and a memorial plaque are fixed to the southern face of Mount Lindsay, remembering this tragic incident. This mountain is no respecter of persons, no matter how much experience they have. The final tragedy I want to tell you about 
has an unusual but interesting connection with Mount Lindsay, although the death did not occur here. He was best known for his rock climbing, acrobatic and base jumping skills, Toby Benham, also known as the Human Spider, the Daredevil from Down Under, or more well known by his other name which he changed by deed pole, Lucky Chance. Now before we get to exactly what happened to Lucky and his link to Mount Lindsay, you need to first hear about how he survived death at the age of 26 and why his new name fits so well. It was a place called Hanging Rock, located in the Blue Mountains of New South Wales, Australia. It was here in July 2010 that Lucky was working with a production crew on a climbing movie called Smitten and everyone was there to film him performing the death defying death swing. He had performed this extreme stunt many times previously, but on the final swing of the day, he performed an additional flip, and the pilot chute tangled around one leg, preventing the main chute from deploying correctly. And he fell 200 meters before it finally deployed, 10 meters from the ground. But it did manage to um, come out of the bag just before I hit the ground. And somehow, I don't know how it came out of the bag, and I don't know how I managed to survive, <laughs> but um, I landed, whoo, standing on the ground, just like, whoo. Lucky called that episode a really good adventure. It's, it's pretty amazing, like a real adventure, a really good adventure, and I don't have a scratch on me. He went on to many more adventurous places, including climbing to the summit of Mount Lindsay twice in the following year. In the climber's logbook on top of the summit, Lucky Chance wrote an entry on Monday the 14th of March 2011. He writes that four days earlier on Friday the 11th, he climbed up Vidler's chimney with no ropes and all alone. He called it the Great Chimney, and he thought that it was the main track. He states that it took him two hours of complete desperation, but he reached the top. He then proceeded to base jump off one of the cliffs where he then landed in one of the farming paddocks. Four days later, as he writes in this entry, he returned and climbed up the rear tourist route, which was much easier, he says. And once again, base jumped off from the top. When I see some of the videos of Lucky Chance and his climbing skill set and capabilities, I've got no doubt that he was able to climb up Vidler's chimney and that what he writes would indeed be true and accurate. He was actually a very skilled climber. However, on the 17th of August, 2011, the rules of physics finally caught up with Lucky when he was fighting for life in a French hospital. After jumping from a cliff in the French Alps, he struck a ledge more than 140 meters down, but managed to open up his parachute at least partially. This is what saved his life, as he wound up suspended in a tree canopy about 100 meters above the grassy landing zone, with a shattered pelvis and jaw, open fractures in his femur and foot, collapsed lungs, and a serious brain injury. And he was in a coma for two weeks, but he survived and he got back into base jumping once again, but apparently was never the same. Fast forward a few years to Tuesday the 8th of September 2015, Lucky returned to Hanging Rock once again to the death swing. It was as if he had something to prove again from five years earlier. 
This time, however, something went horribly wrong. As he threw himself off that cliff edge, he swung and somehow by a freak accident, he smashed into jagged rocks, suffering fatal head and chest injuries from the incident. And he was left dangling from a 30 meter climbing rope. Lucky Chance died at the young age of 32. Thanks for watching this video about the tragedies of Mount Lindsay. I hope you found this information interesting, if not even sobering, but most importantly, life valuing. Now go and check out my full video here, how I explored this extremely treacherous and life endangering eastern side of Mount Lindsay and found Vidler's grave simply by chance. I don't call it luck. I think it was more like divine providence, but it was definitely white knuckle stuff, mate, and very eye-opening. Catch you on the next one. All right, just gotta watch this gimpy gimpy plant. Don't wanna touch this. You don't wanna do this, or this, or this. Choo!